Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've got some interesting ones to share with you guys tonight, starting with one from my latest fascination, the early 90s. This bad boy was listed two months ago, and man, did I want to buy it. So let's take a look at this thing. First off, it's a Les Paul custom, technically in the prehistoric era, but zooming in, it's not a prehistoric, like, particular reissue of anything because it's got the Nashville-style bridge. So just regular Gibson USA production here, but what makes it fascinating is the fact that it has the three humbucker pickups. So kind of pulling some B7 vibes on us. But instead of being a black beauty finish, we have this gorgeous quilt maple top. Now, first glance, you might be like, is that a one-piecer? Nah, you, you can see a seam line right here, but that is a particularly nice top with the natural finish. This thing definitely has some great vibes to it. And to make things even better, it appears to almost be new old stock and condition. Because the gold, there's no wear on that. That is great. It's not impossible to find guitars of this era in this condition. However, each and every year they become more rare. But then looking at our headstock, we have the old style Gibson logo. So this hasn't yet converted to that mid 90s logo that we know and love yet today. So it still kind of has some like late 80s attributes to it. So I love it for that fact. And then looking at the back here, nothing too spectacular, just some nice wood grain, but great condition. So yeah, three pickups, awesome top, fantastic example, right? Ah, oh, my goodness. The fun has not yet even begun. Bam. Look at that neck. That is a ridiculously flamed mahogany neck. You generally don't find mahogany quite that figured. <laughs> so the fact that you find it on a guitar that looks like this on the front, that's just absolutely insane. Like you see flamed maple all the time, but figured mahogany, that's harder to come by. So zooming in here to our serial number, it makes it a 1993 model. So that's correct. It looks like 260th day of the year, but it also has a custom shop edition decal. So that's pretty cool. That means there's more than one of these out here. It was either a catalog guitar or a dealer custom order where they made a small batch of these. Now, whether that's two, five, 10, 20, we'll never know, but it's custom shop originals that usually mean a one-off. It also still has the original case. This is like the perfect storm of a guitar. So you're probably wondering, why did I not buy it? I mean, 8,000, I could see the right end user. However, this early 90s stuff just quite isn't there yet. So I had offered them 6,500 shipped, which I still feel was a very fair offer for that. But I was declined, but that was probably because, you know, it was just listed. If I made that same offer today, maybe they would be more willing to listen to it. Maybe not. But that was my absolute best offer at that time. So if I'm not going to buy it, I'd rather one of my viewers gets it because that is just a really nice example of the early 90s with some pretty cool woods. But it's Ash Rock Guitars in Pleasant Grove that has that one if you're interested in it. But it's kind of strange how much new old stock stuff is showing up from the 90s. People must be retiring that were dealers. Because that was the story behind my collection of limited colors edition guitars that I purchased here. And you gotta remember, sometimes when people say it's new old stock perfect condition, what actually arrives isn't actually always as advertised. <laughs> But continuing on our 90s journey here, granted the late 90s aren't as cool as the early 90s in my opinion, but give it another 10 years, maybe they will be. This is a custom shop Les Paul custom ordered one off, according to the seller that they're listing for $4,000. Let's check this thing out. Beautiful flame top. I'm digging that. We've got a trapeze tailpiece on this thing, kind of like a 70s ES335 or various other arch tops. That's really strange to see on a Les Paul because you could go, hey, you know, the original Les Pauls, they looked like this. You know, 1952s, they got those under wraps because of the design flaw. But that wasn't strung through like these trapezes. So in that aspect, yes, it is actually very unique. Other than that, we have black plastics, which kind of hides in the dark finish of this one, and P90 pickups. So I think they were trying to hearken it back to the original Les Pauls, but just kind of modernize it a bit. But now look at the neck. All right. So we've got the split parallelogram inlays like you'd find on the double neck EDS 1275s or like an ES 295, which maybe this is kind of trying to channel some like Scotty Moore vibes. They use something very similar to that. Check out this review if you need to learn more on that topic. Another good way to get these inlays on a guitar is check out the Guitar of the Month LP 295. That gets the sharp Florentine cutaway and some other attributes. And then we get to the headstock. We have a crown inlay, kind of like the 68 Les Pauls you can learn about in this episode. Or you could say it's like an SG. Either way, this is a pretty fascinating custom order. Like this is something I could see like the mod collection or demo shop doing yet today, and it wouldn't necessarily be all that special. 
But you have to remember, this is early custom shop days. The custom shop opens in late 1993. So we're what, on our fifth or sixth year here? They're still kind of figuring out what they're doing here. But what's extra fascinating here is the fact that we've got older Schaller tuners on here, but I'm not seeing any other holes for other tuners. So that might mean it originally shipped with Gibson branded Schallers, like sometimes you find on these archtop style guitars. It's either that or in the very early 90s, you can actually find Gibson branded tuners that don't have any securing screws to them. They actually have a little barb on the back. So if we removed one of those tuners, then we'd be able to tell. But I can tell you for 100% sure, those are not the original tuners to this guitar. Because those are late 70s, early 80s created ones. But the serial number, kind of hard to see. I think that starts with an 8. So on that one, it would be a 1998, which lines up perfectly with what the seller is saying. So according to the description, it's in pretty good shape. Gibson confirmed the custom order status, which they should be able to help you with. Anything in the 90s and made newer, they should have some sort of a record for you. Because that's when the current era, like, officially began and they started keeping records and stuff. That era only ended in 2018. So how much did they want on this? It's about 4,000 bucks. For all the unique specs and it technically being a custom shop, I think they are right on the money to the right collector who happens to fall in love with this piece. But it's so unique that might take some time to find. I hate to round out tonight's episode, let's take a look at a guitar from the very end of the Norland era, a 1985 Gibson Les Paul Custom. But clearly, this is not just any Les Paul Custom. Somebody's Zach Wild this thing. So Zach's original Bullseye Les Paul Custom is a mid-80s Les Paul. I forget the exact year right now. However, his has a maple neck, so it would have to be very early 80s, late 70s style. However, a lot of guys do that whole bullseye theme, but not a lot of people go after his other buzzsaw theme. So this one's just, you know, completely different from any of the custom shop releases. It has its own purpose. And it even has a factory Kaler for even more fun, right? But the true beauty behind this one is the fact that they also did it on the back. You don't normally get that. And here you can see it's a black finish. So maybe this actually started as an ebony custom and it's the white lines that are painted over top of it. Or maybe they just stripped the whole finish and just did it all custom. Probably easier that way. But what you can't see on the front that you can't see on the back is I love that optical illusion they've got going on there. You've got the circle in the center, which just brings that whole illusion to life. I love that nice little touch. And judging by the yellowed over lacquer, this is probably a pretty old refin job. And I'm sure it has lots of stories that it could tell us. Because besides the obvious modifications, here we can see the Gibson branding, so that is factory Kaler. We'll have to read the description to find out about the pickups, but we've got a metal switch tip here. The knobs look replaced to me though, because they aren't quite aged. But sometimes it can just be viewing angles. Speaking of viewing angles, looking at it, I never even noticed that the pick guard looked kind of weird. <laughs> Normally a Les Paul pickguard kind of protrudes a little bit right here and not having that, you know, it's routed for like a three pickup Les Paul custom makes it look very strange. And here I think they went almost a little bit too bold on their buzzsaw vibes. It gives it an interesting look. Headstock looks just about untouched. We've got Schaller strap locks on this one. Surprisingly original frets yet. You'd figure if you're going to do the graphics on the front, you would refret it. But who knows, maybe they thought that was good enough. And ooh, looks like they upgraded our wiring. And we've got some patent applied fours. I'm wondering, is the seller claiming those are original? Because that would not be the case. Yeah, unfortunately, he's telling you those are original. No, you'd have Tim Shaw PAF. So those are worth a lot more than these 57 classics. That's probably just a case of when he bought it, that's what the person said. So he's selling them like that. It's just misinformation that gets spread from seller to seller. It happens all the time. Let's check out a Fender. This is just cool. It's got a TV Jones in the neck, regular single coil in the bridge. But I just fell in love with the figuring on this one. Like, you can go up here to the headstock. It's got cool figuring, too. And the pearl tuner tips. But all this, it's, it's just so much. It's beautiful. I like it. Even the back of the neck is all bird's eyed and whatnot. But whoa, that's from 2017. That's an oldie. That's been kicking around at that shop. Maybe I have an unpopular opinion here. <laughs> but it just kind of reminds me of like some abstract art. Like you get a butterfly right here. That's like a nose. And that's like the upper lip. And you get like frog eyes. He's just peeking out saying, hey, how's it going? <laughs> like that's the, the bottom part of his mouth. I, I, don't, I don't know what all this other stuff is, but yeah, that's something I see. I also see a face right here. The eyes, like little nose, the mouth, kind of like an alien mummy type thing. That's kind of a cool telly. But it seems to have sold fairly recently. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.